Welcome to the Succeeding Over All Roadblocks LifeCast, a show about self-discovery and vibrating higher in every area of your life. Each week, I'll have conversations with some of my favorite people who are soaring over life's challenges. They'll share their struggles, but more importantly, the lessons they've learned along the way. I'm your host, Keisha Whitaker, entrepreneur and transformational speaker. Let's get ready to soar. Keisha, you got me singing early in the morning. Uh, Here we go. There I go, there I go, there I go, there I go. Pretty baby, you are the soul who snaps my control. Such a funny thing, but every time you're near me, I never can behave. You give me a smile and then I'm wrapped up in your magic. There's music all around me, crazy, crazy music that keeps calling me so very close to you, turns me your slave. You're listening to the vocal stylings of my guest, the uber-talented Dana James Mwangi. In 2012, she stepped out on faith and launched Cheers Creative, which has grown into a powerhouse agency for brand strategy, graphic design, and web design for public figures, creatives, special events, and arts and entertainment platforms. She has presented on some of the largest stages, and is called on frequently as a thought leader and has been featured in countless publications, including Forbes, Essence, and top tier industry publications. She also has one of the top selling website themes on the market. If that wasn't enough, this busy wife and mom of three was handpicked by Google as a digital coach for Memphis, Tennessee, where she is teaching courses to help black and brown entrepreneurs automate and scale their businesses. We chatted about branding, business, life, and the principles that you can use to brand your true self. Please welcome my esteemed guest, Dana James Mwangi. Hey, Dana. Hey, Keisha. I'm so happy to be here. I am so happy to have you here. I feel like I have hit the jackpot (laughs) having you on the show. Seriously. I have watched you for so many years. I love what you do. Everything about you from your fashion sense to how you do what you do in your business, how you're a wife, you're a mom, you're transparent, the way you tell your story, how you live with such intention. And I just want you to come on and talk about some of those things because... I think when we separate who we are from what we do, it just gives and it shines through so well. And so I wanted you to come on and talk about that because you have all of that wrapped up into one for me. Wow. Okay. And I've always respected you. I've always looked up to you. So this is special for me too. Oh, thank you. I'm going to talk about how we met. So I remember, and you can tell me your your version, but Mm -hmm. I just remember the first time I heard your name and I was like, let me find out. She does branding. And I just started, I think I had my business for a few years at that point. And I was kind of stuck in my business. And I said, well, even though I'm a PR and branding person, like I need some branding help. I need someone to take a look at my, my work and see where I could improve. And so I scheduled a consultation with you. You had just started out. You were new, uh, a new business owner. And I remember us sitting at Starbucks mm-hmm. and I con- and I paid you now. Mm-hmm. Let's, let's you get did. that straight. You did. Because consulting, you can't just sit down and pick people's brains. Yeah. Okay. You did not ask me out for coffee. You asked, you there was a paid consulting session. You are, yes, yes, you did. You did. That. Yes. Uh-huh. And you gave me so much advice and so much information in that session. And I was just sitting there like, wow, like she knows her stuff. She's on her, like I could see where you were starting out from and to see your evolution now. Like from, I mean, over the years, I just started drifting back. Quite honestly, I went back into the job world and got out of my, you know, closed my business down and you just kept soaring and kept going and going and going. And to see you where you are today with all of the accolades, with the great success that you've had with your business, the type of clients that you work with, and even, you know, from being in Essence and Forbes and all these great publications, I just say so well-deserved and you work so hard for it. Thank you so much. 
Thank you. It was hard. It was lonely at times, but it has been very rewarding. I must say. Thank yes, you so much. Yes, yes. And y'all, the she's so multi-talented, okay? Dana does oh, no. so much. I was like, when God was giving out talents, he gave you like 30, 40 talents. He gave me everything but the ability to braid. Ain't that about a something? Look, you do don't it. need it. You don't need it. I do need you, it. You can do everything else. <laughs> and there's some people out here wondering where their talents are. You got all their talents. Oh, got, I got them, honey. <laughs> yeah. and, right. and as you heard, she not just sings, she sings. Okay. <laughs> there's a difference between singers and singers. And then you also do impressions. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I do voice impressions. I do speaking impressions because the truth is I'm an art kid. I mean, I grew up singing. I grew up drawing. I was always singing. I even said I sang backup for CC Winers one time in college. And I was very, I was undecided my first year because I didn't know what I wanted to do. Did I want to sing? Did I want to go into visual art? And I chose graphic design. And uh, I never knew how to marry those two worlds together. Uh, So I would just kind of sing on the side, but graphic design turned into a brand strategy turned into doing websites and so now i just sing for fun and here i am <laughs> well you know you gotta do a few impressions a couple of i let you do two two impressions <laughs> oh my god uh so i got a lot of speaking impressions i got Iyanla Bonzon, I got Lisa Ray. What I do is I listen to one person and then I find another person that's very similar to them. And and then next thing you know, you can imitate all these people. So it's easy to jump for Iyanla Bonzon. Keisha, why am I here? My producers told me uh, that I'm here because you got a problem that needs to be fixed. And I don't know where the problem came from. So I come out of Brooklyn. So I'm, I'm going to get to the chase real quick. You can't be a gutter snipe all your life. Uh... And I'm done. Go in peace, Miss Whitaker. <laughs> so, like, do that, right? <laughs> and then, because her voice is low, you can go up to Lisa Ray. Everybody out the dressing room, please. Everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Even when she's happy. I am happy. <laughs> I'm like, oh, my God. And so you just keep going and going and going and going. But I think the, the thing is, I can listen very well. And so even though I'm in brand strategy, I'm in design, that ability to listen and pick up on people's inflections and stuff, like I, that's, I, I, live, I listen with that same level of intensity when I'm doing brand strategy, when I'm consulting. I still use my gift either way of listen. I think at the core, the commonality between that is the fact that I, I can listen. And listening, we have two ears and one mouth for yeah. a reason. Yeah, you got that right. <laughs> yeah, and let's, that's a great segue into, you know, she's more than just a singer and all these other talents, but Dana is a phenomenal brand strategist. You have really made a name for yourself in the industry as a brand strategist, as a graphic designer, as a web designer, and you are noted. You are noted in essence, like I said, in Forbes, a number of industry and trade publications. So I definitely want to tap into your knowledge and expertise on that. And uh, we'll talk about from a personal perspective, using branding to reinvent ourselves. So let's talk about what you do in your business. Share some of the projects you worked on and how you do what you do. Okay. Yeah. So I'm founder of Cheers Creative. We do brand consulting, brand design, and we do web design. We do it for creative professionals. We do it for a lot of industry leaders, people who have had businesses for a long time. And now everybody wants to know how they do what they did. Those people kind of tend to need the same things and they're boosting their personal brand. So uh, we do a lot of that, Uh, do a lot of stuff for art causes, and so, yeah, so we've worked with people like Dr. Nina Ellis Hervey of uh, YouTube. You may know her as Beautiful Brown Baby Doll. And when we started working with her, she had 500,000 followers and we grew her to a million in like three years. And she was working by herself for eight years before. Can so, you believe that I met her? I knew her mm-hmm. when she first started out. So it's so weird. Like mm-hmm. me and her cousin were really good friends and I met her. She came to Memphis. We did like a natural hair meetup. Mm-hmm. I've been natural. I've been natural since like 2005. And there was this website called Vote Key that was out mm-hmm. there where we would post our photos. We would post all of our natural hairstyles, products we're using. Um, everybody was trading ideas at that time because mm-hmm. natural hair care was so new Mm -hmm. and she was one of the people I connected with on there 
And she created a massive following back then just she through did. photos. And yeah. then they see, you know, she started talking about her weight loss journey and being at People Magazine. And she mm-hmm. just blew that thing up. So she, did. she found the right fan. person. Yeah, yeah, I was, a, I was a fan of her first, too. I was a fan of her. I, mean, I started watching her content in 2012. We met two or three times after that, but she forgot that she met me. And one day she just emailed us and we had a conversation. She's been our client ever since. And she's turned into one of my dearest friends. No. Oh. Something I did not re- did not expect, but I'm so thankful for. Well, that's her. That yeah. is absolutely her. So mm-hmm. I could see how you two would connect and be on, uh, not just on a business level, but on a um, heart to heart level as well. So, yeah. yeah. What else you working on? So uh, we do a lot of stuff for Harlem's Fashion Row and the founder of it, Brandis Daniel. Brandis Daniel is originally from Memphis, but she mm-hmm. went to New York, studied fashion, got into the fashion industry, and she noticed there were not enough. Uh, black designers clothing on the racks in stores and she wanted to change that and so she had to create these larger than life fashion shows celebrity studied fashion shows to make sure that black designers and multicultural designers got exposure and so she created Harlem's Fashion Row and so fashion shows cost six figures to produce right so she had to learn how to get event sponsorships so she has gotten over 3.5 million dollars in um sponsorships from every major corporation you can think of backing from almost every celebrity every media outlet and so she's become a master at doing that so we've we've done branding we've done uh sponsorship decks we've done press kits we've done uh, graphics for her fashion shows and then we've done things for her personal brand too because now she packages that knowledge and shows people how to get sponsorships even during covid um even during the pandemic and so we're uh, doing the branding on that um now the biggest thing she did so far is she and three black female fashion designers under her umbrella, they co-designed LeBron James' uh, first women's basketball sneaker, and it made a big splash. And um, she was all over the place, all uh, Good Morning America on TV everywhere. And and um, and so yeah, we had, her website was on standby, and she was booked out for paid speaking engagements through that website because we had everything in place, just ready to um, catch all of that traffic and engagement while she was doing all those awesome things. And so what you do, I I notice is not just branding. It's not just like the logo or mm-hmm. the website or the design. You take a very holistic approach to uh-huh. making sure your clients have ROI on everything that you do. Absolutely. And we had a choice to make because, uh, you know, I came from I'm a, I came from graphic design school and we learned how to make beautiful things, how to think like a designer, how to uh, conceptualize concepts and make logos and, and things like that. But when we got out here, I realized, wait a minute, we're building things on top of unclear businesses. And so I started to feel kind of convicted about that. Do I take this business person's money and not address their pricing, not address their business name, not address the fact that their audience is too broad or not defined enough and and then give them false hope and make them think this logo is going to fix everything and that they can go hide somewhere after that? Or do I go ahead and be a nosy graphic designer? See, what happened was I was a nosy graphic designer and that's how I ended up becoming a brand strategist because I'm like, we got to talk about your business name because you want a logo, but the logo's not going to work because we need to address your business name. We have to start there. And I had to learn how to sell that. I had to learn how to plainly explain why we have to start here. Just like a doctor, a doctor doesn't just start working on you. They do a physical They can't work on you and prescribe medicine off of what you say. They have to see what's really going on or else they'll be held liable. And so as a design strategist, as a brand strategist, I feel the same way. If you tell me something's going on in your business and we see that it's because you got too many products or services, I know a website is not going to help you because you got too many choices on the website. We got to condense some stuff. And I don't want you to waste your money. And so we attract clients that want that holistic experience. We attract clients that don't just want the three concepts for a logo and a 10 page website. They want to be led. They want somebody to take the business strategy and lead them so that they can go do what they do best and let us be the brand strategist. Let us be the art directors. And I, I enjoy that quite, uh, quite much. And what I love about it too, like I remember when I started out, I did some branding and it was pretty much more of like what you said was helping them 
understand the the science behind their logo and the name of their business. And people were coming to me fresh off of, I'm I'm starting a business. I need PR. I said, you don't need PR until you get your business structure together. Once you know how to structure that and have your business, your, your values and your mission and all of that stuff in place while you're doing what you're doing, Mm-hmm. Then you start working on what your brand is because your brand is simply a memory. It's simply a memory. And it press doesn't work unless you have a solid offer. What is right. the point in being in all of these major publications? That's like going viral. And I need something to work with. Set up. Yeah. It's not like, okay. You have press, but where are we leading people to? You don't have a product ready. You don't know who your audience is. We have, you have to know who you are first. You have to know what you're offering and how you're going to offer it to eat like and that's where branding comes in and if that brand is strong then the pr is going to work even better and then like again you have assets you Mm -hmm. have photos you have a website you have things that a a pr person or a publicist can really work with to promote you well right yeah it's our job as brand strategists to give you all pr experts dream clients because they got everything they need they got content they know how to explain who they are they have clarity then you can craft stories around them you can pitch stories of clarity to anyone so that's so i'm taking one for the team by being a nosy designer (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah. And I think that's what you have to do in any profession. You have to be mm-hmm. inquisitive. You have to start thinking mm-hmm. outside the box because that is what sets you apart and helps create your brand. That kind of took me into a segue about what this show is actually about. And that is branding yourself and uh, really doing it at any age, because I think in life we go through seasons, we go through changes and traumas and issues and how do you begin to start reinventing yourself and and staying relevant and right. really dealing with what what I, what the catchphrase is today is imposter syndrome imposter and, syndrome mm-hmm. absolutely and just living with intention so when we talk about that tell me what that means to you and what that looks like as far as re- reinventing yourself using maybe some of the brand principles that brand principles. you guide your clients with i can even tell you about my journey cuz um when i first started it was very intimidating. There were already brand agencies out here, design agencies that had all the major clients already sold up. And I'm like, how am I going to get in here? I don't have a building. I don't have a big team. I don't have a fancy office downtown. How am I going to compete? And so imposter syndrome started setting in right there. But I knew that I had the talent to do what I was doing. And what I decided to do was just take a different approach. Okay, well, I'm not going to compete with those agencies. I'm going to go find clients elsewhere. And I'm going to just start talking online. I, you don't know the CEOs of these agencies, but you'll know me. I'm going to make sure you know me. That's that's what became my difference. And then just showing that I'm a regular person and showing just a little bit um, of my life became part of my strategy. And also just talking about design and talking about the method and the philosophy behind the work instead of just posting pretty pictures of the work. Let me tell you why we chose this font. Let me tell you why we chose this color. Everything is super intentional. You know, people love a good story and they need to know that you're going to handle their project with care. So I began to not just show artwork, but show the strategy behind how it worked. And the internet became my best friend because I couldn't get out. I was newly married, had twins, had a a son that was seven at the time. And so there's a lot of things I could not do. I had to get out via blogging. And that's how I ended up getting referenced in Forbes. And that's how I was right here in the city, but ended up really getting awareness more so um, in other parts of the world first before uh, it started happening in Memphis. Yeah. And I tell people all the time, international or national does a lot of times bring local attention to you. Once they see that credibility and that stamp on you, Then they're like, okay, now we want to work with you. And uh, it's a shame that it's that way, but it has worked out for you (laughs) on another level. And so how can we as as individuals take that branding approach, let's say, of brand discovery? How do we Mm -hmm. evaluate ourselves and have others assess us? Like you said, you assess your your clients. Mm -hmm. Um, What are some things that if we're looking to reinvent ourselves, we need Mm -hmm. to start discovering about ourselves? You know, one thing you can do is you don't have to take stabs in the dark. If you're already working with people, ask them, what is the best thing about working with me? What is what is it that you liked the most? And, you know, and they'll tell you. And whatever they tell you, give the people more. Give them, give them more of it. And what I get all the time is, Dana, 
I love that you teach me and you don't make me feel stupid. I love that you encourage me. I love that this almost feels like therapy. So I went in on that and that was a daring thing to do because I could just shut up and design or I can be an entrepreneur that talks about self-care and imposter syndrome and how clients ask you for things from a place of fear sometimes and how you have to recognize that and combat that with compassion, not, no, we're not going to do that. I'm a design strategist that talks about those type of things. That's another way. So I just leaned more into what was already working, which took a lot of courage to do and quite honestly took therapy because I did not see that. Some people may ask, well, do you really have to do all that to be a great designer? Maybe not, but it feels good to me to really dig deep into a client's business and to ask them, why do you want to do this? Why is this near to do to you? We've had sessions where clients were crying and me and my creative partner, SO was like, what is happening? Because, you know, people's businesses are their babies and right. you are allowing me to be the midwife to this business. And it's, it's, you know, people get sentimental and my job really is to help people see that they are enough so that we can create simple solutions. We don't want to create fluffy stuff that helps makes you hide which is what a lot of business owners want. And then when they understand, hey, you, you can knock it out the power of park with simplicity, we spend a lot of our time consulting our clients on that. Then the website and the logo and everything else is a piece of cake. Mm-hmm. You're right. And I'm just listening to how you, like therapy worked for you. And it's almost like therapy for your clients when they come in mm-hmm. to you. Because I believe therapy is life, honey. What led you to it? What and- led me to it was... I was operating my business in survival mode for a very long time. And so I was working a lot, but it just, it wasn't showing up for me on paper the way I needed it to show up. I had a devastating encounter with a client who I admired very much. And this is my first time talking about that. And I've dealt with clients with all different types of personalities. But for some reason, this particular client, I don't know if it's because this this client was well-known and powerful. I thought I was done and I felt myself shrink. Mm -hmm. I felt myself shrinking. That year, I was nominated for uh, 40 Under 40 uh, Memphis Urban Elite Professionals. I was one of the 40 Under 40 and I felt so bad about that client situation that I almost called and said, I don't want to accept this award. I'm not worthy. And my partner had to talk me out of that. I thought I was done. And it was all in my head and my anxiety went through the roof. And uh, Before that, I started getting a lot of exposure. And that kind of started the anxiety. I was like, you have to be perfect now. You have to be perfect now. You want essence. You have to be perfect. You can't mess up. So I wasn't giving myself any grace. And so when that encounter with that particular client happened, and I had to go to therapy to figure out why did that affect me so much? Because I've dealt with clients who were disrespectful. I've dealt with clients that are great, but I've, I've dealt with some, some monsters before, <laughs> like we all have. But this one, I really felt like I was done. I felt so diminished and embarrassed, and I just wanted to hide. And I had to go to therapy to unhide and get down to the root of why that particular interaction affected me the way it did. And I was uh, diagnosed with general anxiety disorder. And I was able to address childhood trauma, address trauma that entrepreneurship has caused. Because if you if you operate a business in survival mode, you're dealing with imposter syndrome, the trauma from entrepreneurship can cause some mental issues. Yes. See, people don't like to talk about that. And if you're going to be in entrepreneurship, what do you need? An accountant? You need business insurance? And you show enough need therapy. You get all of them at the same time. If I could do one thing all over again, I would have had a therapist at the same time. And so what you have seen in the past, what, two years is me taking big leaps because I was in therapy every week undoing that trauma and then once the trauma is undone then you're in therapy to expand or what you thought you wanted so that you don't shrink again because of that i've gone on to do things for clients even bigger than that client that like the the type of clients you can't talk about Mm -hmm. (laughs) you know done amazing things and um was even more profitable after that because therapy had helped me to avoid shrinking. And there's even more things coming coming down the pipes. And um, I'm just so excited that I was able to get healing and get back on the right track and choose to continue even after that encounter with that client to lead with compassion. And the other thing is, now that I'm in therapy, 
when I hear a client snapping back, I don't hear I don't hear snapping. I hear fear. I hear anxiety because you're an entrepreneur just like me. So I know what you're going through. I know you're scared to let go. I know you're scared to just be simple. I know you're scared to just start with one product. That feels scary because you've been taught you need excess. And then don't mess around and be a black woman entrepreneur. That's a whole nother set of issues that we have just from that being second guessed all the time. Because I've been, and I'm not a therapist at all, but because I've been in therapy, uh, intense therapy for so long, for myself as an entrepreneur, I can recognize when I hear anxiety in clients and I'm able to speak to that and help them move past their fears so that we could create some, all of that to create a great website. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. okay. So you said so much in that, in that statement, because I was thinking about the therapy part, the part about shrinking back and it resonated with me personally, because I've done that a lot in my life, Mm -hmm. knowing that I was capable of doing so much more Mm -hmm. and situations caused me to shrink back. Mm -hmm. And so in hearing what you're saying, knowing that, A, I'm not alone in that, but also how you deal with it is the things that we tell ourselves. Okay. It was like when you said you thought you were done, you know, what's for you is for you. Mistakes happen, things happen, but what's for you is Mm -hmm. for you and no one or anyone can stop it you think they might try to destroy you you think you may be done Mm -hmm. they can't stop it 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 was and i and i was so wrong i was so wrong and i'm so glad that i was so wrong you know because it's to the point now where my reality is bigger than what i could ever dream the things that are happening the opportunities that are coming to speaking engagements the things i've been able to do during a pandemic i never imagined that i would do and this has been one of the most productive years of my adult life even during the pandemic uh, but if it wasn't for me going i had to go through therapy to even get to that point otherwise i would have missed out on everything i would have just curled under the bed and believed the lie that i was done because one person did not like my holistic approach to design you know mm-hmm. and, and we was able to take our holistic approach and make a profitable program out of it profitable uh brand workshops and intensives out of it, and then make design based on that holistic approach for clients and so, what if i had to listen to that for right so not only are you doing the work you're mm-hmm. teaching others how to do it you're mm-hmm. being sought after for your 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 approach mm-hmm. and that's how god works and just opens things up for us on you know, on levels that we can never imagine mm-hmm. you know how do people begin to get on that journey to get there to get there mm-hmm. the truth is you just have to start moving and i'll give you even some things i do um i write in my journal the things that i want but i write them like i already have them i write them in present tense i am the best brand strategist i lead with compassion my clients love me i have more than enough i listen to marissa peer a lot on youtube she's like a celebrity therapist and she's like your brain will believe whatever you tell it so you are already telling it lies tell it a better lie that you're the best Muhammad Ali used to to tell himself he's the best, but he didn't believe it at first. He kept saying it until he became the best. And you can train your brain just like you work out your body. You can uh, work out um, your mind, just like you're in a mental fitness gym and work, work out your mind, but also just take small actions every day towards your goal. Sometimes anxiety comes from not doing what you know you have been called to do. And then anxiety will be picked up in you from that. I've experienced that too. Talk about the fear of failure and the mm-hmm. fear of success leaving you mm-hmm. in a state of mediocrity. Mm. Oh my goodness. And it's so it's 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 an, it's a weird place to be to be both scared of failure and then scared of success. And even scared being scared of success is still kind of rooted in scared of failure because if I succeed, oh my god, now I have to continue performing at this level and can I keep that up? And you don't you don't even know your full potential yet. <laughs> you know, yeah, it's, it just takes a lot of mental toughness and a lot of training, a lot of self-care and being around the right people, surrounding yourself in positive messages, prayer and meditation, if that's what you do. And also doing the thing and allowing yourself to make mistakes so that you learn from them. That's the only you have to put out imperfect products. Now you give the best customer service. But if your product is imperfect, you got to let the customers tell you that. You can't create things to change people's lives and not let them put their hands on it and tell you what's wrong with it. You got to put it out there so that it can be revised over and over and over again. So you have to accept feedback and criticism because it makes your product better and say, 
Thank you. You just made my brand better and you made this product better for you. You have to kind of look at it that way. And I was telling them we had a packed out branding workshop. It was like a hundred or so people there before COVID. And I was telling them, go ahead and put your product out while it's imperfect. Yeah, you're going to feel like imposter syndrome. Yeah, you're not going to feel confident. You're going to be scared for it to fail. You might be scared that it'll be a success. But let's look at the iPhone. The first iPhone I ever bought was an iPhone 3GS back in 2008. And we kept buying the different versions. You keep buying rough drafts. You literally keep buying rough drafts. And and here you are, scared to put out your clothing line, scared to put out your podcast, or scared to put out your book, scared to launch a website that you can edit at any time. It's not like it's set in stone. But these big companies, they test stuff on us all the time. They put a limited time sandwich at McDonald's. That's a test. That's a rough draft. And when we sitting up there buying it, Why won't you give yourself the grace to do the same and experiment with your products and services until you get it right? Taking that approach that you mentioned about prayer and journaling and just getting out there and stepping out there, is that the way to overcome the imposter syndrome? Or how do you feel your way through that? Because everybody I've met has Mm -hmm. experienced experienced imposter Mm -hmm. syndrome. So I don't know if you ever beat or stop feeling imposter syndrome. My definition of beating imposter syndrome is doing what you're going to do anyway, even when imposter syndrome is talking to you. Because if you are truly somebody who tries to push the envelope and you're somebody that's always trying to do something new, yeah, you're going to feel scared. Yeah, you're going to feel imposter syndrome. And we always think somebody else has something over us. Oh, that person has a degree. That person has a certification. Or that person went to college. Or that person came from Ivy League. That person has more uh, followers than me. And some of those people are looking at you like, man, they seem to have this and they seem to have that. And that's what I found. We all looking at each other like, man, I wish I had. I wish I had. And I can't say that you'll get over imposter syndrome. I can say you can get past it. And, and, And the more that you do that, the imposter syndrome won't be so bad. Because now you'll have a life history of doing stuff and it working out. Mm-hmm. And then you'll be able to tell the imposter syndrome, shut up, because you're lying. Right. Because I have proof. I have receipts that I am. I have proof. The, the, <laughs> what I yeah. say I am. So, yeah. yeah, I have proof. So, you know, once you get your five, first five-figure deal, or once you sell your first course, or once you make, make your first major book deal, or once you do this net. See, now you're, you're, or once you get your first testimonial, or once you make money for a client. All you need is one time to see what you've done and then just start building a a, history, a bank in your mind, a history bank of the times that you got it right. And even the times where um, you might not have got it right, but you came back. And so that'll help you to kind of quiet imposter syndrome. Wait a minute. I've been through this before, uh, something similar. And I came out of it and it was fine. And I'm going to be fine. You know? Right, right. And I something you said, well, something that you do, actually, that I really pay attention to is you do everything with intention from the way you wear your hair to the color of lipstick you wear to how you show up on posts on social media, how you tell your story on social media. Talk about how you live with intention in that way, not just to drive your mm-hmm. brand, but right. it's who you are and how mm-hmm. how you attract what you want through your intention Mm -hmm. you know and it took a lot of bravery for me to get to the point to even just wear my hair natural or to show myself and my big lips and show my big nose and it took but I know that somebody needs to see that now let me be clear I got 30 inch yakky wigs up in the closet right now I love a good straight wig good yakky wig something is wrong though when you think you must show up in that way to be accepted but I'm versatile okay but I do show my big hair as long as you got children in South Africa being kicked out of school for wearing afros I'm like I'm gonna wear my afro and I'm gonna show people that you can be in a boardroom with afro and Nike zone if you want to the lip colors that I wear I wear a um, black owned lipstick uh, from the lip bar um, and then a Memphis owned brand too, uh, Missy Russell. And I wear bold lip colors on purpose because I was told that I could because my lips are too big. And that's why I do it. And just to bring some color into my life. I love a good bold lip. I'm doing everything people told me I could not do. And I love it. And you also do mm-hmm. stuff. I mean, you just keep it real. And like you'll mm-hmm. be on Instagram stories in the bed, like with the with the hair wrap yeah. on, like I do that. 
I do. You know what, Sonny? I did that. I do that on purpose because I need my students and my clients to see that I practice what I preach. Because right now, like I said in that IG story, it's a pandemic outside. And you're going to miss what's for you trying to put up these uh, picture perfect images. Nobody cares. People are hurting. People have lost loved ones. People have lost jobs, economic opportunities. People are mourning deaths. People are mourning what they thought their life was going to be. And you really think you uh, on Instagram in a brand new uh, dress in a power pose laughing while people are dying. Do you really think that's the right signal right now? No. It's not. And that's why I did. That's why I showed myself in my bed, in my bandana. And I literally closed a um, a four figure uh, consulting deal with a branding client that day. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> because they said, wow, there's got to be a different way I can. OK, so I can market myself this way. I'm like, yes, absolutely. Yeah. And you you said done is better than perfect. It doesn't have done to be. Done is better yeah. than perfect. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I have to ask you this question. And I always ask my guests, if we took away all of the the press and the accolades and the business and everything around you, at the end of the day, who is Dana James Mwangi at her core? Dana James Mwangi is still a visionary and an encourager at the core. And I even asked myself this because I used to be a, a visual artist and drawing. If I didn't draw anymore, would I still be me? Yes, because I was born to encourage I was born to teach and I'm going to do that through any channels um, that are available to me. And so right now that channel is is brand strategy and it's uh, teaching people digital skills and it's giving people design that works for them. But whatever channel opens up for me in the future, I'll do that too, because that's just a vehicle for my purpose. My purpose is my purpose. It don't matter what vehicle I use to get there. And I think that's the thing that people are very small minded sometimes in terms of the vision that they have. Mm -hmm. And how did Mm -hmm. you open up your vision for your life? Because some people Mm -hmm. just think big, you know, or or Mm -hmm. there's times where I thought I was thinking big and I was like, wait a minute, Mm -hmm. somebody just showed me I could think even bigger. Right. The truth is, and not everybody needs this, but you know, I had small children and I had to take big leaps because I'm like, I keep taking these small leaps and I'm paying for it by having 16 hour work days. And it seems like when I take bigger leaps, when I price better, when I take bigger deals and better clients, I have more time with my family. So now I go from working 16 hours a day to maybe two hours a day. Teach me thy ways. Yes. Yes, (laughs) ma'am. And that's what we do. And so wanting to spend time with my children and my husband and even getting back to myself, I lost 40 pounds this year. And the holiday that was, uh, was, you know, is a direct correlation to really hacking in, into my business and making a business that works for my lifestyle and for the way that I raise my family. And so that was my catalyst. There's a lot of people um, that may not need that, but that's what I needed. I got I got children smiling me in the face every day asking, can we go to the park? Can we do this, mommy? And, mommy, I love spending time with you. Well, I want to keep giving them that. And I can't do that playing small. You said a mouthful. You cannot play small in this life. And you can create the life that you want. The life that you, you dream of. It's like mm-hmm. I thought about pack selling my house and everything in it, and everything I own and moving to another country. But I thought, oh, you know what? That's right. really far fetched. I really can't do that. But it can be done. It can be done. And I've seen articles of people that have packed up and left African-Americans packing up and leaving and going to different countries and saying, oh, I'm never coming back. Yeah. I've, I've seen that. Because we want to go somewhere you know, where we feel I, safe. Right. I know uh, I have a friend that moved to Ghana and is doing amazing amazing in God with the business mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and you can work from anywhere with what we do anyway exactly yeah. so that's the other thing you know you really have to be virtual right now you can't rely on your building even if you have one you might not be able to use it the way you want to so what is your business without the building you know you got to be able to pivot yes being adaptable and adjustable mm-hmm. in all situations it's how you stay alive in your business you know a lot of mm-hmm. If you think about the companies that have gone by the wayside, it's because they did not adapt with the times. Mm -hmm. Think about Blockbuster getting kicked off the block by Netflix. I mean, you've got to really adapt with what's happening in the marketplace. Yeah, I I totally agree with you on that one. I'm going to pivot and switch gears a little bit and talk about one of the challenges that has helped you become who you are 
right now. I think you share with me your roadblock has been confidence. How far does that go back and how have you been able to deal with that? I try to pinpoint where my issue with confidence started. You know, I was always a shy kid. I felt like I couldn't dance. I wasn't cool. Or I wasn't pretty enough or whatever, whatever. And then we all go through bullying in school, and, uh, you know, teasing and all of that. And then, you know, I got into college and had a baby and had to sit out, had to drop out. And I lost my confidence because I was like, how am I going to do this? How am I going to take care of my baby and go to school? And how am I going to get out? And I just started feeling like I was just less than. That feeling of just feeling like I'm less than was, or I'm, you know, I done knocked myself off my goal or whatever, or I'm not as deserving anymore or whatever. The problem started in college and um, it, manif- it manifested in different ways. And so what does therapy do? Help me to undo that trauma. So now that as a woman in her late thirties, I'm not behaving as 20 year old Dana who was sad and didn't know what she was going to do. Cause I have tools now. I have answers now. And what are some of those tools that you use? The tools are honestly, this is going to sound weird. People think You really got to sit under a tree or something and get some motivation to do stuff. The trick is to not let too much time go by. Just do the thing. If you, if you let, if you say, I'm going to do this and you let too much time go by, what happens? You start scaring yourself. So the earlier you do it, the less anxiety you will feel because you you won't, you'll beat anxiety to the punch. You won't even give it a chance to even start acting up. If you just go ahead and do it because you'll make something real, make something real big in your mind if you don't just go ahead and do it. And the truth is, you know, I'm confident in my results that I've gotten for people. I'm confident because I really do care about people. And you going to get Dana, whether you like what she looks like or not, because Dana gets results. Okay. <laughs> and that's the thing. And, yeah. and so mm-hmm. I describe confidence as mm-hmm. when you started riding a bike, you didn't know mm-hmm. what it meant to ride a bike. Mm-hmm. And then when you right. fell that first time, it hurt. And you, it but hurt. when you got back up and got on the bike again, you knew what it felt like to fall. So you could anticipate right. what mm-hmm. would happen. And that's how you mm-hmm. build confidence. If you That's how you build confidence. Yeah. Hey, falling helps you get rid of the fear of falling. Because now you know where the you Yeah, because you know how far you're gonna <laughs> fall now. You're like, okay, I know what's gonna happen when I yeah. do that. So getting that mm-hmm. confidence from the experience and then like you said, standing on the results. You've mm-hmm. been there, you've done it, mm-hmm. and you know what the result will be. So that gives you the confidence. Uh-huh. Absolutely. And I want to give you a tip that my therapist gave me. When you know you have gotten results and you know you're good at what you do, and you know that you're doing the right thing in life, you don't let somebody come along and tell you something else opposite of that. You do not put down your truth for someone else's. Mm. Period. Always go back to what has what, what what is undisputed, the results that you are getting. Do not put your truth down for someone else's. Let me say it again. Do not put your truth down for someone else's. That's a quotable right there all day. And that's what she gave me. And I work on that every day. Do not. You have a truth and you know what's going on in your life and what's going on in your business and your client's life. And so what if somebody else doesn't think it's that hot? You got receipts. Even if you are just a year in, you got some type of receipt somewhere and hold on to that. And do not let anybody shake you from your truth. And then also find those people who are drawn to your truth, who relate to your truth, who can um, support your truth. Because at the end of the day, the clients that you have are the clients that you want, are the clients that you've attracted, are the friends that you've attracted, are the partners that you've attracted. So talk about how you attract what you want through that. A lot of it is branding and messaging. I talk directly to the people that I want to work with. And then online, I'm presenting myself a certain way and showing you, hey, this is how I get out. This is what I believe. So this is this is how I approach business problems. And I'm very firm on the type of clients I want to work I want to work with. There is a book that I read a long time ago called Book Yourself Solid. And it's talking about how as a business owner, you should have a red velvet rope policy. And what does it take for clients and customers to get through that rope? Do you want customers or clients that are energetic, that value X, Y, Z, whatever, whatever, whatever. And we're scared to do that because we want to accept everybody. You know, we want everybody to be our customer. But the truth is, that's just not a realistic thing. You know, 
I think in what you're saying too, for business also translates to us mm-hmm. as people in our personal lives, mm-hmm. because everything you said can relate mm-hmm. to someone reinventing themselves as a person yeah. and assessing yourself, having someone mm-hmm. assess your skills, your talents and mm-hmm. what makes you tick. And at 20, mm-hmm. people told me I was driven and ambitious and I was all these things. And mm-hmm. at 30, I was something totally different. And now at 40, mm-hmm. I'm something totally different. So, you know, mm-hmm. knowing how to reinvent yourself at any age mm-hmm. using yeah. the like the branding principles that you've talked about, I think are really yeah. important. Mm-hmm. And giving yourself the permission to do mm-hmm. that. Like look at Rihanna. Rihanna came out in 2007, totally reinvented the asymmetrical Bob, asymmetrical rock star clothing. Nobody was doing it at the time. Everybody had to adapt. She started something completely different. And she wasn't dressed like that at all before. Wasn't doing music like that at all before. She literally reinvented herself. And it was just so good. If People are still following the trend she did in 2007. Like, give yourself the permission to make yourself over or to be your true self. Because the truth is, has Rihanna been like that the whole time? Mm. More than likely, because the, what, what, the powerhouse that she is, more than likely that was a reveal, not a makeover. So give yourself the permission to 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 be yourself. Be yes, you should be yourself in business. I am funny, I am goofy, but I also know my stuff. Yeah, I, I sing and impersonate people. And yeah, I do that. Yes, I uh, get on Instagram in my uh, bandana sometimes. Yes, giving yourself the uh, the space. And uh, allowing yourself to be yourself. Really, I I don't even know if it's really reinventing yourself. The struggle is always really getting back to your true self and giving yourself the permission to be yourself 100% in business wow and in life because and in life that's what you hit the nail on the head a lot of times people Mm -hmm. don't feel like they can be their true selves but the fact of the matter Mm -hmm. is we're all multifaceted individuals we have Mm -hmm. a lot of different things we bring to the table and you but you also have to have the emotional intelligence to know who you can show those things to because i Mm -hmm. always say that life is like when we talk about attraction i classify people in terms of a concentric circle, like in, or let's Mm -hmm. think of it like a target. So Mm -hmm. in the center of the target, that's the people that are close to me. That's my heart. Those are the people who will always be near and dear to me. Then the next level Mm -hmm. is, you know, a little bit further Mm -hmm. out and so on and so forth. So you Mm -hmm. have to be able to classify people in the places where they need to be. Everybody doesn't need to be at the heart. Everybody doesn't need to be that close to you. Know how to, to protect those Mm -hmm. facets and shout out to the people that are in my circle that are in it because they've given me the courage to be myself my husband gave me the courage to be myself my closest friends my sister friends uh, my guy friends uh, my creative partner and the people that I collaborate with like they've given me permission to be myself in certain ways and I'm not really alone that heart that circle is very small. <laughs> is that small for a reason? It is, it is very yeah, small. Yeah. And I wouldn't trade my circle uh, for the world. But yeah, they've given me courage too. I'm fiery and feisty because my circle is. We're going to start kind of wrapping up here. So I want everybody to know, uh, tell us where they can find you online. Okay. So you can go to uh, my consultancy's website, Cheers Creative, www.cheerscreative.com. And we are everywhere, Instagram, Facebook, um, at Cheers Creative. Then you can follow me personally, my personal website, www.danajamesmwangi.com. And I'm on Instagram at Dana James Mwangi. Okay, and I'll have all that in the description or the show notes for everybody. So Dana, I just really appreciate you for joining me because I have seen your evolution from single mom of one and budding entrepreneur to wife and mom of now three, a branding and design mogul, and just an all around badass. Okay. <laughs> Thank you so much. It takes and, one to know one. Yeah, I tell but you your what. evolution has been even more awesome to me because you are a person who speaks with passion, with wisdom and authority. And you are so intentional about what you do and how you touch people. So thank you for being here. And I just, I love you and appreciate you. Love you back. Thank you so much. This was so good. I feel like I can go to sleep now. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you so much. I I enjoyed this. Thank you. And everyone, thanks for listening. 
be sure to tune in to us next week and join us on social media where we'll probably keep the conversation going i'm sure until then y'all keep soaring thanks for listening to the succeeding over all roadblocks life cast follow the show on instagram facebook and twitter at soar lifecast for more tips and motivation you can also email questions to soarlifecast at gmail.com. Be sure to catch new episodes every week and leave a review of the show. Until then, keep soaring. <laughs>